Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of Tufts University has looked into levels of vitamin D in the brain and dementia and also into better cognitive function. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Tufts University, which covers a study that was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's and Dementia, which studied the brain tissue of people who had varying rates of dementia and their levels of vitamin D. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. An estimated 55 million people worldwide live with dementia, a number that's expected to rise as the global population ages. To find treatments that can slow or stop the disease, scientists need to better understand all the factors that can cause dementia. There is currently no cure for dementia. In fact, because dementia is caused by different diseases, it's unlikely there will ever be a single cure for dementia. Research is currently aimed at finding cures for the dementia causing diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia and frontotemporal dementia. Researchers at Tufts University recently completed the first study examining levels of vitamin D in brain tissue, specifically in adults who suffer from varying rates of cognitive decline. They found that members of the group who had lived with higher levels of vitamin D in their brains had better cognitive function overall. Dr. Sarah Booth, PhD, co-senior author of the study, and director of the Jean Meyer USDA Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging said, this research reinforces the importance of studying how food and nutrients create resilience to protect the aging brain against diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and other related dementias. Vitamin D supports very many functions in the body, including immune responses and maintaining healthy teeth and bones. Sources of vitamin D, as well as sunlight, include the following. And vegans who do not get adequate vitamin D from sunlight need to consume vitamin D fortified products, such as bread and juice, with the sources coming from algae. Dr. Kyla Shea, PhD, an associate professor at the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy at Tufts University said, many studies have implicated dietary or nutritional factors in cognitive performance or function in older adults, including many studies of vitamin D, but all of them are based on either dietary intake or blood measures of vitamin D. We wanted to know if vitamin D is even present in the brain and if it is, how those concentrations are linked to cognitive decline. Dr. Booth, Dr. Shea and their team examined samples of brain tissue from 209 participants in the Rush Memory and Aging Project, a long-term study of Alzheimer's disease that began back in 1997. Researchers at Rush University assessed the cognitive function of the participants as they aged. These were older people with no signs of cognitive impairment, and after their death, they analyzed irregularities in their brain tissue. In this new study, the researchers looked for vitamin D in four separate regions of the brain. Two regions associated with changes linked to Alzheimer's disease, one region associated with forms of dementia linked to blood flow, and one region without any known associations to cognitive decline related to Alzheimer's disease or vascular disease. They found that vitamin D was indeed present in brain tissue, with high vitamin D levels in all four regions of the brain correlated with better cognitive function. However, the levels of vitamin D in the brain didn't associate with any of the physiological markers normally associated with Alzheimer's disease, including amyloid plaque buildup, Lewy body disease, or evidence of chronic or microscopic strokes. Dr. Kyla Shea of the Friedman School of Nutrition Science and Policy stated, 
that dementia is multifactorial and lots of the pathological mechanisms underlying it have not yet been well characterized. Vitamin D could be related to outcomes we didn't look at yet, but plan to study in the future. Now, vitamin D is also known to vary between racial and ethnic populations. Most of the participants in the original Rush cohort were white. The researchers are planning follow-up studies using a more diverse group of subjects to look at other brain changes associated with cognitive decline. They hope their work leads to a better understanding of the role the vitamin D may play in staving off dementia. Dr. Kyla Shea closed by saying, we now know the vitamin D is present in reasonable amounts in human brains, and it seems to be correlated with less decline in cognitive function. But we need to do more research to identify the neuropathy that vitamin D is linked to in the brain before we start designing future interventions. If you believe that you may be insufficient or deficient in vitamin D, or you just don't know, please do not start blindly supplementing. Take a blood test to check your vitamin D levels. If you are lacking, then consult with a doctor to plan your vitamin D strategy. Try to get as much as you need through extra sunlight and or through your diet. Having done this, then get tested again. If you are still lacking, then look at a supplementation regime prescribed by your doctor. Now, when talking about vitamin D as a supplement, vitamin K2 must also be mentioned. There are two main forms of vitamin K. Vitamin K1, which is found in plant foods such as leafy greens, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Vitamin K1 prevents bleeding through the clotting or coagulation cascade. And there's vitamin K2, which is found in some animal products and some fermented foods. Vitamin K can be further divided into several different subtypes, the most important being MK4 and MK7. One of vitamin K's most important functions is to regulate the calcium deposition that's afforded by vitamin D3. In other words, it promotes the calcification of our bones and our teeth and prevents the calcification of our soft tissues such as blood vessels, kidneys and the heart. So if you do want to supplement with vitamin D3 K2, where can you buy it from? Of the big three, ProHealth at the moment does not sell a vitamin D3 K2 combination. However, Renew by Science and Duna Age do both carry vitamin D3 and K2 and both offer the MyNMN 10% discount at checkout. And there are links in the description below to those two sites. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Although only one study and not really conclusive, I don't think there's any problem with exposing yourself to sunlight and supplementing if you need to, to maintain the right vitamin D levels. Even if it turns out there isn't a protective effect from vitamin D in the brain against things like Alzheimer's, it's not a bad idea to make sure that you stay within the correct reference range. Let me know in the comments below, do you take vitamin D3 as a supplement? Do you also take K2? Do you know what your levels are or are you just supplementing to be on the safe side? And are you one of the many people that take a multivitamin to think that you're catching everything? If you are, please check your vitamin D level to make sure that the multivitamin is not underdosed. And also check to see if in your multivitamin you've also got vitamin K2.